Thank you, Christu, and uh, good evening to everybody. Um, it's again a Thursday evening. It's the time on a Thursday that we are, you know, uh, just listening to the word, hearing the word, and uh, loving the word. So uh, um, we just we're going to get into it. It's just, uh, you know, for me personally, I've got the screen in front of me and my presentation that I'm looking at, but I cannot see you. Um, that's always, you know, a challenge with this virtual meetings. Um, even though we can see one another on a virtual platform, you know, it's not the same uh, uh, as in person. But uh, but God has given us this uh, this opportunity and this uh, this platform to to discuss the word of God and to listen to the word of God, to hear the word of God. And, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Wenzel's heart is, and, and just to reaffirm, is to, the, uh, you know, to expose all of us to the Word of God um, on a daily basis. And uh, we are privileged to, you know, to do that on a Thursday evening. Um, we believe it's, it's going to evolve into, um, you know, really touching the nations. Um, the Word of God, not, uh, not the teachers, but the Word of God we've got confidence in. Um, and uh, even tonight, we're going to have an uh, interesting time. I really believe that uh, the word is so alive and so powerful that even one sentence that you hear has got the ability to change you and to put you in a, uh, you know, in a, in a next space. And um, the word of God, um, the, you know, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's in Romans 12 verse 2 that says, you know, it brings transformation. You know, uh, the word of God brings transformation. And that is what it's all about. We are not stagnant people. We are not the just dormant people here on earth. Uh, it's a process that we are in. And I want to emphasize that we, you and I, as we are sitting, as you are listening to this, you are in a process of transformation. If you allow God in your life and if you're busy with the word of God, if you're busy with the word of God, you're busy with God. You know, some, sometimes we think, you know, it's just a book we read. No, no, no it's God's voice. And, uh, uh, and, and it can, can become so alive to us. You know, the word of God, uh, um, it can become rhema. It can become, it is logos, and it can become rhema and daba word. And, uh, um, and that speaks of revelation. It speaks of futuristic. It speaks of, 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 uh, of uh, life giving. And uh, so we, we are serious about it. And as what Christo was saying, we had a meeting with senior pastor um, Wenzel and uh, it's, it's, it's really, you know, the word of God is active and uh, it's a joy for us as a team to minister to you. But it's, uh, uh, we are just vessels because it's the word of God that does the work with the Holy Spirit. So let's just pray together uh, before we start this evening. Father, we thank you that we can gather around your word. Um, it's, only the Holy Spirit that can bring uh, your spirit that can bring revelation and direction and wow moments and uh, and the big word is transformation. It's only by your word and by your spirit that that can happen in our lives. And Father, we just bless every person that are listening in, whether they are sitting with a coffee, whether they are on the couch with their phone, but that your word over this platform will just uh, just do what you purpose it to do in their lives as they hear, not just listen, but as they as they hear the word of God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Right. Um, as Christy was saying, you know, we are finishing off with the interesting book of Judges tonight. And uh, personally, I think and we had a discussion as team as well. You know, Judges just open up. Uh, it's a very interesting book how God used specifically not just kings and prophets in the Old Testament, but he also used judges, judges to uh, to rescue his people from uh, from from the enemy, from from the nations that were against God, from uh, he actually used those nations to get his, 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 his people back. But the, the way he used them or the way he got them back was through the specific people called judges. And we know that there was, uh, there was, there was uh, 12 judges, judges and we, we spent some time in uh, the more prominent judges in the word of God. We, we had a look at Deborah. We had a look at uh, Samson and, and Gideon. 
Um, and so on. And tonight we're going to um, to have a look at uh, 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 a judge by the name of Jephthah. Jephthah. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. There's too much H, uh, H's and T's. There's uh, there's three H's in that name. Um, so uh, just apologies if I don't. Uh, um, you know, pronounce it or uh, accurately, but but there you go. But before we get into that, I just uh, you know every every Thursday we just send through a bit of a topic uh, um, that we are working on for for that specific Thursday, and there's a it, it almost brings a bit of a golden line through um, what we're going to present tonight, and uh, I just want to read to you in one Samuel. 16 verse 7 um, and how, how God sees us and I'm going to read to you just want to put my glasses on 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says the following but the Lord said to Samuel because he was he was to anoint David but at that point he didn't know uh, um, who David was he was just to go to uh, to uh, um, uh, David's father and to go and look who he needs to anoint. At that time, he would know. So verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or the appearance uh, or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. He spoke of, of one of David's brothers. Now, this is very important for you to hear the following, what God is saying or what, what, what God is saying to Samuel. For God sees not as man sees. And I'm going to leave it. We, this is not the, the, the whole discussion, but you will see if we go through to, tonight about uh, the following. God sees not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, what he perceives, what he with through his senses, what he hears and what he sees and so on, um, which is also which is good, nothing wrong. But uh, but the Lord looks at the heart of an individual. God looks at the heart. Uh, um, you can have the greatest appearance, you can have the greatest or status, but what your heart, that many, uh, um, most cases are very much, you know, not open to the world. You can be a very wonderful person, but only God really knows the heart of a person. Only God knows your heart. Um, the word of God also says that our hearts are deceiving. So it's so great to put our lives into God's hands because he knows us and he knows everything about us. He knows the hair on our heads. But most of all, he knows the heart um, of an individual. So just uh, just think about that and uh, and see if you can find the golden line throughout as we are discussing the last uh, um, the last. Not the last uh, judge, but uh, the last focus on judge. And then we're going to close judges. Uh, maybe just quickly look at the last chapters. That is very interesting. And that's very relevant for the time that we are living in today. And uh, I'm going to take you back again. And I've done it some two or three weeks ago. And I'm just going to read to you um, God's what God says in the Ten Commandments. Um, a co um, uh, uh, what he says and what he is 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 commanding and why he's doing that, and then we see the incredible journey of God's people rebelling and uh, um, and and disobeying Him uh, almost forever. It's just amazing how God rescues and then, um, based on this Ten Commandments, based on something that I'm going to read to you, He always rescues his people he always he always brings them back even if it's through uh, um, enemy or um, um, heathen nations that are oppressing them he always intervenes and rescues isn't that amazing i just want to read to you just to just to get that context uh, again why god always why he used judges and um, in in Exodus 20 verse 1 says, Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. So he's speaking to his people, uh, to, to um, the Israelites. And he said, to, he said to them, I'm your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of slavery. And that's for 400 years. He brought them out. You shall have, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make uh, for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them for the Lord your God. This is, a, this is what it's all about. Listen to this. For the Lord your God, he says, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generation. And but showing my loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So this is just the amazing God that through that, that, that where his people and he knew that would happen. You know, all the generations after that always disobey God, always uh, uh, embrace idols always uh, uh, um, embraced, you know, the, the, the people that they were staying or the land that they were in, embraced those idols and, and, and religion and whatever you want to call it. And that brings so much decay. And we're going to look at that, what that caused in the normal life of a, of a, of a, uh, um, of a family or a Israel family. You know, it's just, it brought uh, moral decay. And God does, did not want them to, to go through that. And to be oppressed because he just brought them out of slavery. So he appointed these judges, you know, to rescue. And most of these judges, it was a rescue mission um, through a military uh, operation, you know, to, to, to destroy the, the, the enemy, to destroy the enemy's army totally so that the, his people can be free again to get them out of that place. His people, the, the, his people then bow their knees again before him and embrace him because why he loves them. So tonight, uh, so that's just again some background why there was judges. Uh, we will just uh, also look at the summary a bit later on. And uh, just what we're going to look tonight on the agenda is just uh, uh, a Jephthah, um, uh, what uh, the ninth judge um, in, the, in the book of Judges. Uh, we're going to look a bit at, at his life. Very interesting person again, you know, um, and uh, he did something amazing and the repercussions of a vow that he did to God and how it impacted his family and also his, his future um, and so on. Um, then we're going to look at what is, uh, you know, what, what would be the learning from Yafta's life or Jephthah's life? And then we will just do a short summary of... Uh, the book of Judges. Right. So again, um, I would, if I look at the man at Jephthah, he is, and that's in Judges 11 and 12, chapters 11 and 12. Um, and they call him, and, and it makes sense, the man of commitment. Uh, the man of commitment. So very interesting again that this gentleman, I, I have not heard about him before. Maybe I've read his name somewhere, but it just went in and out and over my head because, you know, we, we know about, we've heard about Gideon. We heard, we've heard about uh, Samson. Um, some of us heard about Deborah, the powerful woman, um, uh, a, a woman of valor and a, and a woman with, with the amazing stature that she had. She was also a ruler, etc. But when it comes to this gentleman or this judge, Jephthah, it's just, uh, you know, it's just going over our heads. But in Hebrews 11, I'm going to read to you in Hebrews 11, in that amazing chapter, um, the hall of uh, the faith heroes. Look where his name is at. Now, um, uh, uh, it says here, and what more shall I say? That is, uh, that is Paul, um, you know, addressing, uh, most probably Paul addressing, the Hebrew listeners or the yeah the Hebrew listeners. And he says, for time will fail me if I tell you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Vwap. Yeah, here you go. There jumps this name out, Jephtaha. Jephtaha. Between Samson and David and then also Samuel. So surely there was something again about this judge that, ju that just Stood out. Why is he mentioned in that hall of fame of, of faith, uh, faith uh, heroes? 
there was something about him that impressed the the uh, the writers and the and the history writers and the people who who uh, um, you know the whole uh, message from generation to generation that it still landed up in the in the mind of 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 uh, most probably Paul who wrote Hebrews. So he had definitely a huge impact in the history of the Israeli people, or Israel, the Jewish people. So we're going to quickly look at what can this be. And what really stands out is, is, is uh, the commitment of this man. And there's some other interesting uh, facts as well. For instance, um, and you can go and read in Judges 11, uh, where he was, he, uh, his mother was a prostitute. Very interesting. So his mother was a prostitute. She was, uh, um, his, 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 his own father did not have, uh, had a wife. But he, uh, um, he, you know, he was with a prostitute, and this uh, this Jephthah was was born, and then his family rejected him as at a young, very young age. His family rejected him, and they at such a point that his brothers, you know, pushed him out of out of their place, uh, out of the home that they were staying, and he became a cast out. This this uh, this poor boy. Um, if I can use the word poor, because that's how they saw him. He wasn't part of the family. His own brothers from his own, from, from, from their mother uh, um, rejected him. And he became a cast out and he, and he fled to another place uh, close by. And they also made a statement that they will be no, they will, he will have no inheritance. So really this, this gentleman, this uh, Jephthah was, it's really a cast out. Um, he was, so to speak, a nothing. He was pushed out and he was labeled. Uh, he was labeled as a person that that had a gang of people around him, so to speak. That was the perception of his brothers and his um, and his family towards him. Cost out. Right. Uh, didn't amount to much. But during this time, and this is where I'm bringing in where God has a plan for every person. God does not look. This is powerful. God does not look at the appearance, at, the, at what people experience and what they see and what they, you know, and where they are at. Because here this, this is this cast out. But when God's hand is around you, when God has chosen you, even if you're coming from a prostitute, even if you were cast out, like a Jephthah, you know, God will still do. And he was moving in this, in Jephthah's life during his childhood. You can go and read it during his childhood. And he became a mighty man of valor, a valiant warrior. People, this, this can't just be God. He had so much, he had such a great, amazing reputation. You know, as he grew up as a warrior and a, uh, and, and remember, a judge at that time, most of the judges were really warriors. They were they were astute in 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 military operations. They had you know strategies, and uh, and as God moved on his life, on a, from an early as a cast out uh, during this life, he became his reputation grew 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 until a a, a time where. Gilead, and this is the place now where he, he was originally from. So the whole the rulers of Gilead came to him and said, listen, listen, your reputation is running ahead of you. We've heard that God is with you. We come to you and we just come and we almost bring a, um, you know, a, 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 a peace offering because we need you. We need the anointing. We need you. Because we, we recognize that God is upon your life. We recognize that you are the only one that can, that can save us and rescue us from the Ammonites. Isn't that great? So the people that rejected him came with, with almost with a, you know, with a tail between the legs. And what a, what a, what a, uh, uh, I, I can just see that picture. Here they come. You know, almost apologizing and recognizing and acknowledging, acknowledging that God is with you and we have done so wrong. Uh, we cast you out and uh, and but God was with you and God made him such a powerful, 
powerful military leader and a leader at that time that is that his own people came and said listen we they need him to to rescue so he was a mighty man of valor he was then approached as i've mentioned uh, by the elders and the leaders and uh, um, and they've asked him and requested that they will make him what a story this is they will make him the he um, head over them right he will become their leader now he was the one that was rejected but they said if if, if we know that god is with you if you are going to fight for us because we know if you fight there there will be there will be a there will be victory but if if you do that if we will make you um the head or the ruler over us amazing story so in fact that was what he did and uh, he went before god and god god did a amazing amazing powerful uh, um again it was just a, a miraculous um uh, uh, um rescue not just a rescue well, it wasn't a rescue mission but they destroyed all the ammonites the bible says he moved from place to place to place where the ammonites were were and he you know he and his men just uh, took them out and uh, and destroyed them and he was a man that was acknowledged by god to deliver israel he was zealous for god and and israel and the word of god also says and explains you know or uh, shows us that um you know he was a he was a some form of academic as well because he did studies he studied you know the the history of israel he studied he was he was he was uh, uh, um embracing the god of of israel and how god delivered them and with that anointing and that understanding and that empowerment he was very close with god and god favored this man um the you know the whole of his life and uh, he became the ruler of um that you know he's 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 gilead and the, and his tribe and israel and, but that's not where the story ends so we know that uh, jephthah was was a mighty man of valor uh, god anointed him he had a great amazing connection with god um but this is now the the the, the next event or the next um is uh, amazing how he shows his commitment to god so it wasn't just god anointed him and chosen him but he responded in a powerful way so when he when they requested him to uh, um, to support or to help or to you know to lead the, the armies uh, he made a vow to god now when you make a vow to god at in in uh, in the time of the old covenant it was really saying and explaining and uh, uh, um, showing that you know I have I've got a relationship with God. I myself have got covenant with God. I hear God. I embrace God, and I walk with God. So somebody that makes a vow to the Lord is somebody that has a close relationship with the Lord. So in Judges eleven, something interesting is happening. So in Jephthah, and I'm reading to you in Judges eleven, it says Jephthah made a vow to God and said, if you if you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon in my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me after this. So it's uh, so when he's when he and he knew that that would happen, the Lord will be victorious, and he made that confession, and he was very bold and confident that the Lord, in fact, will deliver uh, the the Ammonites in his hand. He says, when it happens. The first person that will that I meet when it's all done, that comes out of my house, when I return in peace from the people of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's. Very important. Shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. Right. So all this happened, and it uh, the Ammonites, uh, as I just explained to you, were uh, were this well were put to death and uh, there was great victory so he came to this house and who's the first person that came out of his house his own daughter now remember he made a vow to god and he said listen um i know that there will be victory my but that the vow is the the confidence that you will do it and when you do it lord 
the first person, that's a vow that he made. It's not God that told him to do it, but that is his commitment to the Lord. That was his vow to the Lord. That was his promise to the Lord. And almost not arrogance, but more confidence that the first person who came up, and it was in fact his daughter that met him. All right? Now, what, what happened there? So when his daughter came out, you know, I wonder what people would have done. But what he did, he stuck to that vow that he made, that he will give his daughter as a burnt offering. Wow. Now, immediately we will say, but you wish, you know, it's uh, burnt offerings. This is, this is crazy. How would God allow this? Now, if you're really a scholar, and the scholars had, has done some great, you know, uh, um, uh, research on this, and in the original text, it's actually saying that he gave his daughter not as a burnt offering to die, but he gave his daughter as a as a, as an offering to work the whole of her life as a virgin in the house or the tabernacle of the Lord. Now, obviously, uh, the Bible says he he grieved about it, so he wasn't really grieving about giving up his daughter because his daughter was actually in for it. She was okay with it because she knew her father's commitment and his passion and his, uh, and uh, uh, you know, that, that connection that he had with God. So she was okay with that to give her life, uh, you know, as, as somebody that will be offering her life as a virgin all the days of her life, in the in the tabernacle, but what he was grieving about is that he wouldn't, and that he had uh, uh, only one daughter. There was no offspring. Right. So still today, there is a, there is a celebration and a time in Israel where they actually celebrating uh, Zeptia's daughter um, for what she was willing to do to give her life based on her father's vow to the Lord. Based on that vow and that commitment and that that promise that he made to the Lord that he did not break, um, um, and they're still celebrating that life. It's an interesting story of of uh, Jephthah. There's so much more I believe that happened in his life. So they say and they uh, they 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 uh, uh, acknowledge him as a man of commitment. So much so that it made such an impression in the in the Jewish people's history that uh, that he was named in the book of uh, um, of Hebrews 11, the, the hall of fame, the faith heroes in the Bible, next to a David that we, is well known uh, and, and well loved and, 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 uh, and next to a Samuel and a Gideon and a Samson. But he was specifically recognized for his commitment to the Lord. He was an outcast. He was, he was uh, pushed aside by his own people. He had no inheritance, but God was working with him on a constant basis, empowering him, um, being with him, favoring him, that his own people came to him and, and acknowledged that without him, and they brought him back, without him, they were not, uh, they were not able to, uh, to defeat the enemy. And uh, then uh, God used this powerful man of valor to uh, rescue his people again. And this is where I'm coming again, what I'm saying from the beginning. Constantly, God used kings and prophets, but also judges to rescue his people again and again. Right? Again and again. Isn't that an amazing God that's reaching out? Isn't that grace? But that grace is really in the Old Testament. It was his commitment and not even his commitment, but his covenant that he had with his uh, with with the people of Israel. I'm just thinking, you know, uh, how disappointed God had to be, you know, with his people. That's forever and ever uh, um, in the Old Testament, turning their backs upon him and actually did the opposite of what he was was uh, commanding them to do to 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 not to make, you know, not to bow before idols, not to embrace the, the idolatry or the hidden nations God. But yet every time they did it. But uh, God in his love and his loving kindness and his, his covenant with his people always brought um, his people back. And uh, looking to the future, I really believe God looking to the future of the, the, the final rescue mission 
of Jesus Christ. But yeah, so that is the that is the life of of Je um, Jephthah, you know, making a vow, did this amazing thing again as the other judges did, anointed, conquered, but he made this vow that he still today celebrated, a vow that he, he did not break, a vow that he will give his daughter up to, uh, you know, um, and she was okay with it. She understood her father's, yes, her father's vow and his commitment to God and his covenant to God, even on a personal level. And she was for her whole life, not with a man. She was a virgin, but uh, ministering in the tabernacle. Um, and uh, Yeftaz uh, had no, he had no offspring. Um, but yet his name is acknowledged in the book of Hebrews. Now, very interesting. And now we're getting into some stuff. Now, what is that? Um, let's look at his life. God can use anybody. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter... Uh, um, um, who you, uh, you know, your your background, your environment uh, um, that you, uh, you know, you grew up with. Um, it, for God, it doesn't matter your, your what people think about you, but God, God can use anybody who trusts in him. God can use anybody that he chose. You know, he, he, God does not choose the, the, the qualified. He makes us qualified. In fact, he's the one that qualifies us. But it's not about your qualification. Um, Yefta was a was an outcast. You know, um, the Bible specifically say he had a gang of worthless, worthless uh, 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 um, scum around him uh, um, in his early days. You know, they, that was their perception. But that was the people that he, you know, that he grew up with. But in that environment. God was busy raising up and anointing and favoring and even educating and developing him as a, as a man of valor and as a useful tool in the hands of a mighty God. So one of the things that we can take away is that God um, can use anybody, you and me. Um, I've heard yesterday a gentleman in the South saying, you know, he only got stand, standard seven. He had to go out of out of school and standard seven. Maybe you're, you're sitting here and you're saying, listen, I'm not worthy. You know, I'm not so special. You know, um, the Bible says none of us are. But if you look at uh, Jephthah's life, um, if you are born again today, you are chosen. And God sees you as no man sees you. He knows you better. He knows your heart. He knows your heart um, and he knows you and he can use you. It doesn't matter um, how much you know. Yes, it's important to have good doctrine. It's important to know the word of God. It's important to know about God. That's very important. But I tell you where you start off with, we don't have anything. In fact, the Bible says we are, you know, we are Gentiles. We are far off. Um, we are, we've been disconnected. You know, we've been disconnected. Uh, but he uses uh, those, he, those he chose, yeah, um, and all of us are chosen if we are born again, um, and uh, he used us in his great, powerful, bigger picture plan, and that is great. Second thing is the commitment. Um, he had an amazing commitment. Um, his name is all about commitment. His whole profile speaks about commitment, commitment. So he wasn't just there. He wasn't just uh uh, you know, being used by God and, you know, um, almost like a robot type of just, he had a commitment from his side. Yes. And it came out and he showed in the way he made, you know, th made this vow and this vow had made at such a impact in Israel at the time uh, that, as I'm saying, they're still celebrating that, that form of commitment that he had with the Lord. You know, commitment in the dictionary is just speaking of a promise or a firm decision to do something. A firm decision. I'm asking you, how committed are you in the kingdom of God? No, I'm just born again. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, no. There must be a firm decision to do something. That's a commitment. You will see there's a little block um, and you can go and read it. Um, we will send it to you afterwards, a presentation again, which says that commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you. You know, a commitment is, is a commitment towards Jesus Christ and his kingdom 
that is not and it and as we think about uh, um, uh, Jephthah's life, you know that commitment brought him that commitment to God brought him out of where he was, brought him in, in a position of rulership, brought him into a place of valor, brought him into a place of the heroes of faith. Because when the emotional time comes, when the emotional, that mood that he were in, that he saw that his daughter was actually the one that came out of the house and that he need to give her then as a sack, he stood by his commitment. Come high, come low water. He stood by his commitment. Where is our commitment? Honest, where is your commitment towards Jesus Christ and his assignment? You know, people are just airy fairy. We uh, we don't understand commitment, and we need to understand or ask the Lord to help us to get to that place of of stature that our word and our commitment and our vows. Yes, the Bible says also that we shouldn't just uh, make promises that you cannot keep, but it is good to make a commitment and keep to that commitment. That speaks there's something about your life. There's some stature that you've got. There's some relationship that you have with the Lord. And God wants our commitment. He wants us. It's something that we need to give. It's not just all God people. It is we need to come to a place to commit. What is your level of commitment? You know, his level of commitment was not to put his family first. His only daughter. His only daughter. That in, and we know in the, in those times, Old Covenant, it was all about, uh, you know, a generation. It was all about your, you know, your 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 um, uh, um, um, generation after you. But he had none because his own daughter he had. And that, that is a commitment above relationship of family. Wow. Now, I'm not saying we need to be funny and, and, and we need to be uh, out of line. But how good? Powerful is your commitment. Uh, there's a gentleman in the in the Bible that said, Lord, we want to let let's first we before before we follow you, Jesus. Before we follow you, we just want to do this and for the family and this. I want to bury this one and this. Jesus said, There's no time for that. Follow me. We might think that is harsh, but commitment to the cause, commitment to Jesus Christ means something. It speaks something. It is what God that's that's. Most probably the thing why he landed in the 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 uh, and be recognized until today as we're reading Hebrews that there's a, a gentleman by the uh, a judge by the name of Jephthah um, that was a committed person. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, "Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established, or your plans will succeed, or um, uh, uh, your plans will be blessed." Or your days will be blessed. You know, uh, it's amazing. Commitment is something that we need to think about. Because Jephthah's life, Jephthah's life makes us to challenge us. And in fact, it did to me. It challenged my life about my commitment. What is my commitment to the to the to the body of Christ? What is my commitment to Jesus Christ? If I'm saying I'm committed to Jesus, I will be committed to the body of Christ. I will be committed to His Word, His words in the Word. You know, I will be committed, and that speaks of stature. Now, almost in closing, the last chapters of Judges is a very sketches and shows a very um, dim picture of. Um, the Jewish people, God's covenant people. And it speaks of the consequences of idolatry, the consequences of embracing other gods and turning uh, away from God's uh, word, from his uh, uh, commandments. And people, I, I, I was thinking about this. This is why it's very important. And I heard something this week. We a person was telling about the, uh, um, you know how how demonic and evil and darkness can get so easily part of our lives. The moment we we sin, the moment we turn our back on godly principles, uh, God commands, who, which is there. The commandments of God is there to protect us. You know, when God puts the, put the commands there, yes, it showed, to about, it showed about Jesus Christ. But all the 
instructions that he has given the um, uh, um, his people at that time was to stay with him, stay in the covenant, stay close. Then there will be protection. But the moment people turn away from God, the moment families or fathers and mothers turn away from God, there is a decay in that in that uh, uh, in that atmosphere in that family. The moment. Um, um, uh, 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 pastors or leaders turn away from God. The moment, and we we are seeing this in the world today. The moment the um, leaders of and, and presidents and leadership and governments turn away and against God, there's moral decay. There's antichrist. There is the enemy comes in, as in, as we saw in the time of the judges, where the Lord always had. Well, in that time of the judges had to uh, had to anoint the judge to 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 uh, to destroy the enemy to bring his people back again it's very important and that last chapter chapters of judges speaks of even in even the ministers in the tabernacle how they uh, uh, connected to 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 strains and um and heathen practices and that went, you know, even from bad to worse into the and everybody, you know, everybody was the families were bound. You must go and read those last chapters around families and what happened there. It's the most gruesome stuff that God's people did themselves because they were exposed. They were running after other um, heathen gods. They were embracing and bowing to idols. And the moment you do that, you're setting yourself in a dangerous place where evil will come and it will take over your life. Listen, this is what is happening in the nations of the world where people come against the order of God. When your father and mother or families come against the order of God, whether and we know there's a lot of challenge against God's order when it comes to a, a man and a woman and children, that order, the order of the church, when people are, are turning their backs on it, Evil comes, evil comes, and it brings destruction, as we've seen in the Old Testament. And again, God had to bring a judge. But that time is gone. That God is not Jesus Christ um, paid the price. Jesus Christ opened the door for us so that we can be close to God, with God, in his environment, where the word of God, the commands of God, protects us, the spirit of God, where we can be free. But we are seeing it left, right, and center around us. There's a lot of evil coming in because in general, people, governments turn their backs on the law of God, turn their backs on what is good, turn their backs on, 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 on what is good, and what is pure uh, for, for the country, for families. Romans 6 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin, and we look at it in the book of Judges, we just found, just uh, finishing off, look at it in the book of Judges, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin, the wages of turning your back on God, it is a dangerous place, the wages of it is death. And it's not just a, 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 um, a natural death or a freshly death. No, it's a spiritual death. Death means, you know, it creates a place of evil that can come. There's never a place where there's a gray area. It's either God and his protection or outside God and evil comes in, in some way or another in your life, in your family's life, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, nation's, in the nation's life. We can see it, what is happening. People are turning, they're opening themselves up to an antichrist spirit as God's people did in the, in, the, uh, in, in the book of Judges. It is a terrible place and God allows the enemy to come and he will put you in bondage. People will die in bondage, but we need to be free. We've got a big assignment to stay with God, to stay in his commandments and stay, stay in the word of God. What was the purpose of the judges? This, just finally, purpose of the judges in, in the Bible. It was in individuals chosen by God to rescue his people from the enemies and to bring them back again because of his love. He allowed them to be, to, to be taken into captivity because they were just not listening. So he rose these people up. He anointed these people. He was with these people. 
they they were so much uh, they shown so much stature and uh, and character and guys of integrity if you look at the you know a Gideon and you look at the uh, um, you know, a Samson at the end, Samson did not do well in, in the middle of, of his, of his calling, but at the end, you know, uh, he stood and he, he, he made right. And you've heard that, uh, last week and also to establish justice. That's what they did is establish justice and the practice of the word of God, the practice of the Torah. That was the old Testament and God's commands and God's instructions, um, towards his covenant people in accord, accordance with the needs of the time. So people, that is in, that is the book of Judges um, in, a, in over these last uh, four to five weeks. Well, not I, I don't think it uh, four weeks, maybe. Um, interesting how God loves his people. He's got covenant with his people. His people turn away that sinful nature in all of us um, before we are born again, that nature that controlled us, taken them back and, and, and God allowed them to be taken into the, um, um, bondage because of their idolatry uh, uh, um, and, and warring after other gods. And how, how crazy that is, you know, to think. But we're on the same boat. We were in the same boat. But fortunately, um, you know, Jesus Christ, it's about him. He, he, was, the, he was the ultimate rescue mission uh, and the rescue us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And uh, um, I really believe that judges spoke to us. It spoke to me personally about the certain characteristics, certain uh, um, things that we need to manifest, whether it's our commitment, uh, whether it's our loyalty, whether it's our, our covenant with God, whether it is our, uh, um, how we, um, how we stand in difficult situations and Yefta again, just finally, you know, he was a cast out. Nobody gave him a chance. He was put out. No inheritance. He was a cast out. But yet God raised him up. They came back and he did something amazing. He was restored. And, uh, and, and still today, there's a celebration of his vow to God. Very simple vow, but powerful vow in the times of, uh, of the judges at that time in need to to uh, uh, um, overcome that enemy, that heathen enemy, um, the Ammon Ammonites. So yeah, so that's the book of Judges. Any yeah. questions on on tonight or just in general around the topic tonight? Uh, what do you feel? What do you sense? And maybe not a question, maybe somebody, hope, I, I really believe you've got something to say. Please just uh, put up your hand and, um, and uh, ask the question or just go for it. Uh, let's just uh, interact a bit. There's still 10 minutes to go, so let's go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Boter. Okay. Uh, Pastor Anders, thank you for that. Oh, Christo, there you go. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, uh, it was very interesting. And uh, I have to say, I learned a lot about this person tonight, Jephta. Uh, and it reminds me, and I, and I saw your block in the top. Don't make a vow to God and not do it. Um, I think it was a bit foolish of him just to say, whatever comes out of my house, I will sacrifice it. it, it there's a lesson in that as well. Don't yeah. be quick to make a vow. Uh, think before you make a vow, because if you make a stupid vow, you're going to have to be kept to that. So, yes, think twice before you someone just make a vow. Don't make an emotional vow. There you go. Anybody else wants to... Um, uh, say something or share something. You're welcome. The floor is is open. Just put up your hand so that I can um, so that I can say who was um, uh, who who needs to talk. Well, let me just check the um, um, the the um, chat line. Okay, there's no questions on the chat line. Um, anybody else? Uh, while while we give people a chance to think about it, let me throw something else in here, Pastor Amos. This is now a lack of curveball for you. No. I know you love to answer these curveballs. <laughs> um, yeah. As you were talking now about how the the God's people uh, sort of always falls away, and then God lets bad stuff happen to them to bring them back, and we saw that recurring pattern, and even to the point where 
they were taken away captive to Babylon. That was now way many years after the judges. Do you think that still happens today? Do you think God still allows certain nations that in a sense move away from him as a nation, not as an individual, mm. but sort of as a nation to suffer economic mm. downturns in the country, to suffer poverty, in the, not necessarily poverty, but to fall on hard times mm. because they've neglected their God that they've, let's call it in the past, served very, um, very committedly. Yeah. Because we must now in the period of grace. So I just want to <laughs> uh, put those two uh, up against each other and just hear, hear your opinion about it. Because I also got an opinion, but I want to hear yours. Yeah. Look, uh, uh, yeah, opinions are dangerous, but I want to say this. I do believe that God allows. He allows things to happen because it's in the nature of ma man um, to uh, in bad times to return to God. Now, it's not God uh, jumping up and down. But he, he will go to the extreme to get your attention. I've just um, just a quick testimony that I've heard you know, many years ago. It might even be 20 years ago of a, of a pastor in Uganda. Um, just a, um, a testifying of the time that they were under that regime, the Idi Amin regime, uh, where uh, Idi Amin was one of the most gruesome leaders in Africa ever where he would slaughter Christians, he would slaughter his people. He was just a, he was a, almost an antichrist himself. Now, what has happened is, and, and, and this pastor was saying, uh, um, that because of this rage against God's people and what is good, the church at that time was very low. There wasn't, uh, uh, well, not low, um, they were very, uh, you know. Oppressed. Well, not even op yeah, oppressed, but what has happened there, um, he said, um, this whole uh, uh, situation drove them into the bushes. So they had to run. They had to really, to, to you know, for a ran, ran for their lives. But he said that was the most important, uh, 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 greatest place that they uh, could have been. Because then, at that point, the Lord, the Lord spoke to them. And it brought the church to their knees. It brought the church back to God again. And God dealt with the church where they were fleeing. Now, uh, 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 not that they were the, the problem, really, but maybe they were the problem because they were so um, low the, or the, uh, mediocre. And it brought them to back uh, uh, to God in the woods, in the bushes. They say they were scattered into the bushes. And, um, uh, and, and then a time uh, elapsed and 10 years or so later, five to 10 years uh, after Idi Amin's death, and because of the church got, uh, getting back to God, the ultimate was that there was a picture, um, um, I think that was 10 years later, where, the, where there was a new president after 10 years, and he was standing next to this man of God. And he was in, at his inauguration as the president. And he was making a, a stand or making a declaration that this will be a, a, a godly nation. And whilst they were, whilst they were uh, putting up the flag, the national flag, they also put up a Christian flag in that whole ceremony. Um, in, so what I'm saying is bad times is not necessarily bad where God is punishing. I believe he's disciplining. There's a difference between punishment and discipline. Discipline is good for us. It brings us back to God. If your boy, you know, if my children, it's just how it is. I don't care what people are saying. When they were small, um, uh, um, you know, and they were, I will discipline them. I will put them through as a father through a, a discipline process because I love them and it was good for them. Yeah. So bad times, what God allows it to bring it back. He loves us. He okay. loves us and he will do that. That's my opinion. Okay, no, great testimony, but now now for the second curveball, all right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. South Africa, I want to ask you, where do you think is South Africa in that picture? If you look back, you can go to any township, you can go to any town, small towns in the, in the, in the rural areas, big towns, you'll find the biggest, best building there is always the church. Mm. Now, if you go there now, many of those are... Just what that is, a nice building and no life. So do you think there's a time where South Africa was closer to God and that South Africa as a nation has moved away and 
all this plundering and corruption that we are seeing and, uh, you know, people suffering, do you think, do you think there's a possibility that God could be talking to us or that we, we as a nation could be in that position? Um, uh, Chris, too, uh, we are in a very dangerous place because in the highest places of our government, you know, there is uh, there is people that we know now as, and, 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 you know, it's it's not a we shouldn't be quiet about this. Um, and I'm not talking politics. I'm just in the governmental places. People are are opening up to to many things. You know, we know about corruption. We know about this. We know about the good people, but we also know the bad people. But we are at a dangerous place to get back to what God, what what is what God is instructions. And I do believe now this is, again, my opinion that God is showing us to wake up and to respond to what is happening because it's very close to us. We have to come and repent from our wicked ways. We have to repent. Uh, because things are, look, we are in a in a time where the Antichrist spirit, I'm not saying Antichrist as a person, but an Antichrist spirit yeah. is, is running rampant. But because people are, are going away from God is not acknowledged uh, um, anymore as strongly as in the past. And I'm not yeah. talking about, I'm not talking about the ethnic groups. I'm talking about in general, people are, uh, uh, and the moment you turn away from God, this is the pattern that I believe. This is the pattern is that the moment you turn away from God's instructions and to, you know, and not even just him, but his instructions uh, and righteousness, uh, um, righteousness, not God, even God, just plain, plain righteousness, doing good. And what is good? You open yourself up because there's not a middle way for, 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 for darkness and evil to come. What does it do? It brings destruction. We are at a place where this is the evidence of people of 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 people uh, uh, going astray is there now the, the, the this is where we come in as the church where is the voice of the kingdom where is the voice to stand up and where is the gideon where is god is speaking to us as the body of christ in south africa and it's happening that we need to get our voices out there we have to pray for the people that is in government and to be their voice, but we have to strengthen them. But we in the, our communities need to stand up because evil is coming. And I'm not saying that, that yeah, God can allow it, but because it's our responsibility to act. It's not God's responsibility to intervene. We have to, we have to do something, and God partners with us. It's almost we have to rise up. The body of Christ must rise up, and uh, we are over nine o'clock now. But I want to make the statement that that commitment to the body of Christ, commitment to the assignment of Jesus Christ. People that are listening, listen, um, and I'm getting excited about it, and I will think about why I'm getting so excited. But the assignment of Jesus Christ is rescue mission, is to bring and to bring what is bad to make it right, to push out. We've got the authority. We must become the voice. We cannot just allow things to happen. Uh, um, and and Kesara, Kesara. Uh, what must be, what must be, and, and, you know, the Lord is in control. We have to act that and demonstrate that in the name of Jesus Christ. God is standing back with all due respect. I, but God is still in control, but his, his, his church, he's empowering his church to be that voice in even in our nation, in our community. So, um, Chris, that's just a very big thing, and just I just yeah. threw it out there, but I believe uh, that. No, yeah. thanks, Pastor Agnes. Yeah, I think, I, think I, I share your belief. The, the the solution or the the salvation of South Africa is in the church. It's in yeah. God's people. It's in you and me. It's us, everybody listening here, yeah? every believer. Yeah. Uh, without take all the believers out of South Africa, it would have collapsed long time ago. This country is still going fairly okay because of the believers. Now it's yeah. up to us to uh, see it through to to victorious status again. Any case, guys. Okay. Uh, we've talked a lot now. I think we must wrap it up, Pastor Anders. Thank you very, very, very much. You brought amazing insights into the, from this book to us. And uh, I've learned things that I didn't know. So I appreciate you and to Alvin and Voter and, and Vessel yeah. in the background. Pastor Andres was standing in. Thank you to all of you. Uh, thank you for everyone that was tuning in tonight. Uh, please, uh, when we go now, just unmute yourself and say bye-bye. Uh, we can't say, uh, we can't leave without saying goodbye. And then next week, uh, come hungry. 
Uh, don't eat meat on uh, Wednesday night because you're going to get meat on uh, Thursday night from us. So God bless you and have a good night. Have an awesome weekend. For those of you who will be in church, we'll see you there. God bless.